All right, so next I'll cover the uh, oil system on the SLC. This, uh, I did, did mine with a four-stage dry sump. The uh, the pump is from, uh, um, where the heck is it from? Nutter, <laughs> Nutter Racing Engines, um, or down in uh, Vancouver, Washington. Uh, they, they did the uh, short block work for me. Um, so I just bought, bought one of their pumps. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, all the, all three of the, uh, of the scavenge lines come out of the, uh, out of the pan. Um, let's see if we can get a good angle down here. So the pan, uh, up there, I, I actually welded that up myself, uh, out of, uh, uh, eighth inch aluminum and, uh, a flange that I bought, bought off of eBay. Um, I don't know that I would do that again. It was a pain in the butt. Um, uh, a lot cheaper than than one of the aftermarket pans, but uh, yeah, that was a really big hassle. Um, and so, anywho, you can barely see up in there. Uh, I've got the three, um, one at the back, middle, and kind of towards the front there, um, uh, scavenge lines out of there. The pan does have a, a, a baffle screen in it and a, and a, um, a little bit of a windage uh, scraper. Um, and you've got those, the black guys right there are, uh, are just screen filters. So then that runs up to the oil pump, which you can see, hopefully, the, just the bottom of it. That's pretty much all you're going to be able to see because everything else is tucked up in there, uh, really well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, so the three scavenge run into that. You've got one, one scavenge line, sorry, one, uh, output line of there. Uh, out of out of their uh, um, uh, dash 16 line that then goes into the oil tank. Uh, it's a three gallon Peterson tank, which is uh, mounted. There's the top of it there, uh, mounted just in the in the frame rails here, so it's pretty well protected. Um, so it goes goes into the tank. Uh, I've got a, a breather right over here, just a. Uh, standard standard breather nothing fancy there also have a breather um, this one here is connected to uh, a fitting that I welded into the um, uh, welded into the the top of the valley cover um, right there um, so because these these uh, valve covers that I've got don't have any uh, breather provisions on them um, so I just did, did that that way it gets it gets uh, um, Really good ventilation out of the out of the crankcase, um, straight into the into the top of the tank there. So out of the tank, then you've got that line that then um, that's a twelve uh, dash twelve line that goes back to the pressure section of the pump, um, and then out of the pump goes into. Sorry for all the movement of the camera here. Goes into the uh, uh this is a canton um oil th um, uh, oil cooler thermo uh, thermostat um it's kind of big but they're made really really well um it's got a it's got a temperature of um, uh 225 it does flow uh, a little bit all the time just to make sure that you're getting getting circulation through your cooler uh, but then it fully opens uh, by 225. So here, the loop for the cooler uh, comes out of this line here, um, down into the bottom of this uh, fluidine cooler. Um, I always err on the side of uh, get the biggest oil cooler that you can. Um, some different schools of thought on that, but uh, um, yeah, oil does a lot of your engine cooling, particularly when you're doing road racing and stuff like that. So uh, you, as long as you have a thermostat on there, you really can't go too big, is my view. Um, so I've got it going into the bottom um, as opposed to the top. That way you get um, any of the air bubbles get burped out of there when you um, uh, when you first run the, run the pump. So you don't have to worry about air, air getting sucked back into it. So it comes out of the top, back down through this line, back into the um, uh, oil uh, uh, thermostat. And then, and then it goes down into a dash 10, um, because that's, uh, dash 10 is the biggest fitting that I could find to, uh, to tap into the block, um, that goes, crosses underneath, uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, underneath the engine, 
and then uh, up to the uh, inlet on the driver's side. So, and, and that's that was a, a fitting adapter I got. I can't remember where I got that, but it's uh, they, there's a bunch of different places that sell those. Um, I also did a um, actually used one of the stock fans that came with the kit uh, that I just um, uh, put into the uh, into a bracket here to fit onto the uh, oil cooler, um, and then uh, Jay at Infinity Box uh, was able to just. Uh, activate one of the one of the circuits on the power cell that wasn't being used so I've just got a switch that I can manually turn that on and off um, you could you could you know try you know, programming it and things like that to uh, for temperature but I, I don't bother because you really only need it when you're racing um, oh sorry I totally forgot about the oil filter so the, the filter comes directly after um, the pressure section of the pump um, out, out of the slide, so before the thermostat. Um, this is a, a Fram HP6. It's, it's huge um, filter. You know, again, bigger, bigger is always better, right? So, um, uh, since you're doing a remote filter anyway, so I just mounted up, mounted that up on the on the bracket over here, um, and got a temperature sensor over here that I'm going to wire into uh, the dash. Um, and then out into the thermostat. So, sorry, I forgot about that part. All right, I think that covers the oil system.